leave that in, warts and all. Uh, doing some noodling this morning on guitar, messing with a loop pedal. Uh, this is a whole experiment here, a new new series, I think. I don't know what we're going to call it yet. Uh, Noodle Town. <laughs> no, in all seriousness, this is kind of like a chance for us to have more of a, uh, more of a back and forth here on YouTube. Uh, where you send me your questions, things you're curious about. It can be a guitar question, it can be a songwriting question, or just a question about like what I like to do in my spare time. Uh, anyway, maybe it's the comment bin or mailbag. Anyway, uh, I've never played guitar just jamming like that uh, on a YouTube video, just me and the camera. And I gotta tell you, man, knowing that there are people out there like Tom Bukovac, who posts regularly his homeschooling videos, all guitar players watching, go check Tom Bukovac homeschooling out. Or like Jed Hughes, for example, does a thing called Jed in the Shed. Those guys are monster players, especially when it comes to electric. And I've always been more of an acoustic player, though I love to play electric. Uh, I feel like uh, my the core of my professionalism is in playing the acoustic instruments, but I want to be a rock and roller at heart. So uh, I'm just in the spirit of laying it all out there. That's me jamming on guitar. It's something I do regularly, sitting right here at my desk in the mornings. It's part of my morning routine. Try to fill up an empty page uh, with whatever's on my heart. Sometimes it turns into song lyrics. I try to do a little reading, uh, and I try to play some guitar, especially in these times of quarantine. I don't know about fellow musicians out there, but uh, a loop pedal can be your best friend when you're not able to go jam with other human beings. Nothing's quite like jamming with other human beings, but uh, a loop pedal helps you at least do that sort of ping pong thing, right? Um, anyway, so welcome to Mailbag Comment Ben. Leave your suggestion in the comments below what uh, this whole series should be called. Uh, but I'm going to answer a couple questions since uh, this is the first one. I printed out some common questions that people ask in interviews. Figured I'd answer a couple and then invite you all to send me your questions in the comments below. Uh, and again, it can be anything. Question about what book I'm reading or uh, guitar part on one of my records or whatever. Uh, anyway, let's see what uh, let's see what these questions have to offer. Uh, <laughs> what's your annoying habit? Uh, oh man, there's a whole list of that. Uh, I never wash my car, um, and I leave beverage containers all over the house. Uh, that's definitely one thing I do, and I'm I'm a scary driver. Uh, when Kristen, my wife, is riding in the car with me, I, I tend to increase her heart rate and blood pressure on a regular basis when I'm behind the wheel. Uh, let's see. What other questions are on here? Who is your celebrity crush? Oh man, John Oates. Come on. Have you followed him on Instagram? The dude is a silver fox, let me tell you. Speaking of John Oates, he's going to be the next guest on Live from the Lou. I think the date is July 20th uh, for that next episode to air, so mark your calendars. Uh, let's see. What is one message you would give to your fans? Oh, man. Well, one would be hang tight. I am working on new music. Uh, I hope to be making a record in September. Of course, it'll still be a while before, if, if I even make that record in September, uh, before it's out into the world. But I'm doing everything I can. I got a bunch of new songs, and y'all have been sweet to come out to my shows before the quarantine hit. See me play at Station Inn and uh, see me on my live streams doing a bunch of these new songs. And there are even more new songs. I'm, I'm waiting to sing some of the newest ones uh, in hopes that I'll have a surprise for you on the record when it comes out. Uh, but hang tight and thank you for being patient. Also, it sounds uh, cliche, but I got it tattooed on my arm from my hero Marty Stewart. Follow your heart, man. There are a lot of voices out there, especially uh, in the news these days, and they're all loud voices. And the heart is a quiet voice, but it'll never steer you wrong. It's always true. So if you can get to a place where it's quiet enough, uh, Listen to your heart. Follow your heart. Uh, let's see, what are some other... Uh, what has been your best date? Uh, well, one great piece of advice that we got at our wedding, uh, a friend uh, told me and Kristen, uh, don't stop dating after you you get married. And so we try to do that. We try to keep it exciting and like go act like we're still getting to know each other because we are. And, you know, if we're blessed to have 100 years together, uh, I think we'll still be learning things about each other. One of my best dates was my first date with Kristen. We sat at the Pac-Man table at Mickey's, a little dive bar here on the east side, 
and uh, slowest beer I ever drank. I, I didn't want to give her the wrong impression. <laughs> and uh, we had a great conversation getting to know each other. We put some money in a jukebox, played some great records, and we still go back and uh, relive that date quite often. Although we now have the Pac-Man table uh, here at our house. Another great date, one of our early dates, was going to the Adventure Science Center here in Nashville. It was an uh, adult. They have a, every once in a while a grown-up night where you can go through the kids' science museum but drink beer. And that was really fun. It was uh, uh, Pixar themed. Pixar themed. I remember there was something, you know, the Toy Story scene where they're in the land of broken toys or whatever. They had a station set up where you could kind of build your own Frankenstein toy. And that was a good night, too. Uh, let's do a couple more. Let's see here. Who's your inspiration? Y'all know that. Vince Gill, Marty Stewart, B.B. King. Come on, man. Y'all know that. Um, do you speak any other languages? Uh, un poquito. Uh, and my, mein Deutsch nicht gut, nicht gut. I, I, I've tried uh, very poorly to speak a little bit of German and a little bit of French, not French, Spanish. Uh, I would love to be uh, multilingual uh, and uh, hopefully I'll get around to that. I, I think it's a sign of respect to learn other languages and we kind of have it easy speaking English because it's such a universal language but I, I believe in trying to learn about other languages and cultures. Which brings me to the last question I saw on here. Where would you like to visit? Because Lord knows it's hard to get out of the house these days, right? So a question I've been asking everybody is if you could pause quarantine and COVID wasn't real for 10 days, where would you be for 10 days? Or where would you go first when this is all over? And I think for me, Kristen and I took a trip to Ireland last year, and it was just perfect. It was so perfect. And I think I would relive that trip. Although I'd love to get back to London. I love that city. I love when I get to go over and play shows in the UK and Europe. And I want to bring Kristen with me and show her all my favorite haunts. Uh, but it'd also be hard to compete with any kind of beach, from uh, down on 30A to uh, where we went on our honeymoon in Costa Rica. Uh, to the beaches of New England, uh, or man, Hawaii would be great to go visit. Uh, anyway, that's what this is, y'all. Please send me your comments, your questions, uh, and in the next episode of whatever this is called, uh, I'll be answering them. They'll come from you, and I'm sure there'll be much more interesting questions than uh, these ones I printed out. All right, peace.